Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this special episode of Really Dicey. We have a guest today. This is Matt and Manny and Derek Tyler Attico, one of the writers of the Klingon Empire core book for Modifius Games. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, today, we're going to talk about Obviously, Klingons. <laughs> so, so b before we get into it, uh, uh, Derek, tell us what your role was um, in in the uh, Klingon Empire core core book. Uh, well, um, thank you, Emmanuel, for that. Um, yeah, so my role uh, for the Klingon um, Empire core rulebook was the worlds and locations uh, chapter, uh, and contributing to that, contributing that piece of the core book. Um, which is um, was at, at some point, at one point, a nerve-wracking part um, contributing <laughs> to the worlds and locations, um, and making sure that that fit in the uh, idea and framework of everything else that was going on for the uh, for the Klingon Core rulebook. Okay, excellent, excellent, and that that must be a lot of fun to to oh, get a chance to write and research about it. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I've I've had a lot of experience. Uh, writing for Star Trek, fortunately, from uh, my uh, first time I, I wrote from Strange New Worlds um, in 2005, I think. And then uh, again in 2016, I, I've done stuff for, um, uh, for Star Trek. Then um, uh, Jim Johnson brought me in, in on uh, STA and Star Trek Adventures. So I, before doing the Klingon Core rule book, I actually did worlds, the uh, worlds and locations for the Delta Quadrant. Uh, uh, book, supplement book, and that was a lot of fun. And what that did, I think that kind of gave me a framework of how to do the basic structure of a world's location rule book, and I understood that. But once I had that down, I kind of had to throw that out because <laughs> because thinking you have you for this for the Klingon core rule book, you have to totally think like a Klingon um, in mindset, perspective, everything had to be done from the perspectives of the Klingon. And so we did very little from the perspective of the Federation. And I think that's what makes this core rule book so unique and why so many people are gravitating towards it. Oh, excellent, excellent. So um, I'll go first in our Klingon discussion. Um, uh, so we Klingons, when they first came out in the original series, are very different the way how we see Klingons nowadays. Uh, how, how did you and the rest of the team try to balance that in this book? Well, you know, that's a very interesting question. It's a very great question, too, because you're right. I mean, from TOS in the original series to today, Klingons really look different. I mean, from the red makeup of TOS um, to the foreheads of the motion picture, and you know they've, they've had an evolution that's been incredible. But I think what's interesting is that for Cleons at their core, the heart of the Cleon has pretty much, and the spirit of the Cleon, Cleon has pretty much been the same. And so for Modifius and, and for Jim, I know that, that um, my discussions with him, the idea was that is what we're focusing on. We're focusing on the Cleon heart, the Cleon ideals. And if you do that, it doesn't really, it, it always matters. I don't want to say it doesn't matter. It always matters. But the Cleon physical uh, genesis wasn't as important as the Cleon heart, if that makes, you know, if that makes some sense, right? So yeah. once, you, once you focus on the Cleon heart, their ideals, their ideologies, what started them on their path, and once you're locked into that, then you represent all Cleons regardless of the era, whether it's TOS, dis uh, discovery, you know, um, forward, past, I mean, uh, past, present, or future, you're representing all Cleons. And I know me personally, writing the Wars and Locations chapter, that's certainly what I did. I was like, well, you know what? I need to really get into the Cleon mindset, understand what started them. And once you understand what started them, how they started, then you're zeroed in on that and you start writing it like that. Now, TNG and and, and I guess uh, um, DS9, some of the Cleon ideologies kind of softened a little bit by them merging in some respects with the Federation and some of the ideologies we saw through Worf, but at the heart, they've always been Cleons. And so I think if, you, if, we, if you keep that, and that's what we did, that's why you see throughout the book, uh, they are who they are from start to finish, from page, from page one 
to the last page of that book, of the Clearon Core rule book. You know, when, when uh, Manny and I first did our review of the Core, core rule book, uh, which is great, by the way. We're fans of the Klingon, big fans of that book. Uh, big fans of the, the setting chapter. <laughs> Good We're happy to hear that. Everybody's happy to hear that. Thank you. <laughs> um, so after our review, this, the second part of our discussion kind of turned to how to role play Klingons. And, um, you know, it seemed like there was a, a bit of a challenge there because the Klingons um, are a very un-Starfleet culture. Uh, mm -hmm. they're in the, and they've got a lot of, uh, let's say, non-progressive elements to them. You know, they're, they're, they're imperialistic conquest, uh, conquerors, right, who just take resources from other worlds and they're kind of racist and sometimes they're a little sexist and, and they can be kind of strangled by their family honor where, you know, your grandfather does something wrong and you're all tarred forever. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, we were discussing how players would interact with that, how, how you would portray that. Because, you know, when they're NPCs, that's one thing. But when right, right. you're playing them as a character, how do you, how do you deal with that? That's, that's a phenomenal question. It's a fantastic question. I would say, I'll say a few things. One, I would say, I, I, I don't ever want to tell a player out there, this is how you should play any kind of character. I don't want to, because I, I think the beauty of any role-playing game, and especially Star Trek Adventures, is that what you bring to it is so unique, and you being the individual player is so unique, everyone's going to have an idea on how to play a Cleon, um, an Andorian, a human. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, we're, human. we're all human. But I mean, playing a different type of, you know, say a human that's never seen Earth or never been born on Earth. So playing all those different characters, I don't want to tell you that. What I will say, though, to answer your question, I want to, I'm not trying to dodge the question. No, no. To, 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 to answer the question, I will say how I look at it. Yep. And, and, and hopefully people can get some kind of... Um, um, understanding or, or, you know, observations from that. And when I look at it and, and writing them, and I've role played Cleons in the past, and um, just like people, you know, everyone has different perspectives and thoughts and, and feelings on, on life. Cleons are very centric, whether you want to say it's propaganda or not, but they're very centric on honor and the empire. For the Cleons that I've played and in writing Cleons, home and the empire was paramount in what they do and how they think in in their actions and deeds so for example if they're going out and 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 in that it, it's very interesting because in that cleons are a lot like or you know like people and i think that's the whole point of what gene roddenberry was saying in star trek is that here's these people worlds away but they're not that different than us, right? So Cleons will go out and they will conquer a world. And they say, well, you know, we, we conquered these people and they were meant to be conquered because they were weaker than us. <laughs> and they will find justification for that, yeah, right? Because sure. hey, they're weaker than us. And all we're doing is we are just uh, ensuring the safety and security of the empire. You can look at that from different sides. Some people say, oh my God, that's, that's, that's horrible, man. You're, you're, you know, you're, you're, what are you doing? Other people will say, well, you're trying to secure safety of your land. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know, and I think yeah. that's, that's kind of about how um, I look at it is that from the clean art perspective, I can see what they're thinking, what they're saying. Um, not all Cleons are, are um, so political or so violent. And I think there's a spectrum. I think there's a spectrum for all of us in life. There's a political spectrum. There's a, a, a moral spectrum. Um, if you look at a lot of uh, the players, I think they'll look at, because he was the only individual, is Worf, and he was the, the, the Klingon that we all looked at, and we saw things through his eyes. But I will remind everyone that Worf, where he was, a Cleon, he wasn't really part of that society. 
So he was an individual that was taken out of that society and lived life with the, with the Federation and with Starfleet. So in many ways, he was an outsider. He was an outsider to the Klingons and he was also an outsider to the, to the Federation. So you have to look at how he looked at the, the Klingon Empire and you have to understand that he is in many ways an outsider looking in. To be, a, I would look more at his brother Kor mm -hmm. as a Cleon. If you want to, if you want to model as a as a, as a Cleon, uh, I would look. That's, that's one individual that I looked at a lot. Um, someone that everything they do, they they still have their own independent and indi individual uh, ideals and sense of morality, and they try and marry that with the Empire. So now. Uh, I'm playing a, a, a person is playing role playing a, a Cleon character, and you have to say, okay, what morals and am I going to give this character? What sense of what sense of honor, and how far is that sense of honor going to go? Uh, am I going to do anything for the Empire? Am I going to uh, just you know kill, steal, destroy for the Empire, or is that is that going to um, infringe upon my own personal ideals? And I think STA. Uh, Star Trek Adventures is, is wonderful when you're creating a character is that it allows for your personal ideals uh, and also allows an individual to look at what they do for themselves and what they do for whatever organization they're in, whether it be the Federation or the Klingon Empire. So I would tell people, look at what you are prepared for your Klingon character to do personally and what is that character prepared to do for the Empire or whatever organization he's in, whether that organization is um, some secret organization <laughs> or whether that organization is, um, is, 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 uh, is the empire. I, I, I'm, hopefully, am I making that clear? Is that clear? No, no, I get it. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think, uh, I think the system really supports that in, yes. in, um, in character creation. You, know, Absolutely. you pick your sort of goals and beliefs there. Yeah. So, no, I think that that makes a lot of sense. And it allows you to lean on those goals and beliefs uh, heavily, I think, when you're playing a character. You can say, okay, wait a minute, you know, the Empire is asking me to do something, but then I'm looking at my personal goals and beliefs. There might be, and, and that makes for great gameplay because, you yeah. know, then you might have some conflict and the character is saying, well, we just went um, nose to nose with a Starfleet vessel and they're defenseless. My captain is saying, wipe them out. They're defenseless. They're, they're surrendering. My yeah. captain is saying wipe them out. Does that match the individual? Maybe it's a first, let's say it's a first officer on that Klingon ship. Does that match that individual's morality? Yeah. Then what happens on the bridge of that Klingon ship? Because, because is that the honorable thing to do? You've totally taken out that Starfleet vessel's defenses. They're surrendering. Is that really honorable? No, that, that's great, great gameplay, right? Yeah, no, that's going to make for a great game. And right. uh, I, think, um, I think you're right there. Uh, Worf um, really confronts a lot of this. I've been, I've been rewatching uh, Next Generation. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he, um, there's a lot of stories where he confronts these unpleasant aspects of Klingon culture. Uh, like he spares the life of young Doras. Right. And uh, he refuses to commit suicide. Right. You know? um, and, uh, you know, I, I... Brother from doing it? Yeah. Personally, right. I think that is the, the most Starfleet, I mean, the most Star Trek way to, con to confront these issues is just to tell stories directly about them and try to find uh, your character's personal relationship to all that. So, yeah, I think that's great advice. And, and I, I think that's what's so great about Star Trek as a whole is that it keeps pushing up against these questions regardless. I mean, we, we have, when I say we, I mean us as, as players and individuals, you know, I think a lot of times we play and watch things through the Starfleet perspective. And we even play, we're used to playing Starfleet, but now through this uh, Cleon Core rule book, it's like, hey, let's look at it from somebody else's perspective that really may look at Starfleet as colonialists, you know, and say, hey, these guys are infringing on territory. We may not like them. And let's play that differently now. Let's see how we like playing it from the other side, you know? And that's great about Star Trek is that Star Trek allows for that 
in in in, in any in any medium, whether it's um, whether it's on television, film, or now you know RPGs, right? So I thought yeah. it was beautiful. So I have a question about honor. Um, so honor is a very broad term, you know, it and is. I think sometimes sometimes when when someone hears that, they start thinking about like maybe uh, samurai films or or things of that nature. How how would you differentiate? Um, uh, cling on honor with, I guess, the how we view honor. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's a great question. I don't know if I've ever <laughs> thought of Well, I, I have thought about it, but I don't know if I've ever consciously thought about it like that. Um, I'm, I'm really big on, on uh, feudal Japan and the samurai and their sense of honor. And I really firmly believe, I, I don't know this as a fact, but I just believe that a lot of the uh, 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 TNG writers probably took that from feudal Japan, you know, took that element and gave it to the Klingons because it kind of makes sense. I can tell you for me personally, and, and, and I think for, I guess, most of humanity, honor means doing something. First of all, I would say honor isn't always something that you can look at the definition in a dictionary and say, I can apply that exactly to what I think honor is or isn't. For me personally, I would say um, doing the honorable thing is doing the right thing when no one knows whether it's right or not, hmm. right? Okay. Because it's easy to do the right thing when you know you're around all your shipmates, and or or in the real world when everybody's watching. Oh, look at me! I'm doing the right thing, you know. But when yeah. you have that moment and no one's watching, that's honor. That's where you do something that's and that's and that's just one facet i'm talking about yeah. of honor Our honor has different facets right so for cleons you know cleons are really big on honor and, and there were they have enemies and there are times they will do things and they will come up against things and i think for a cleon it's and, and again you know it's a lot of things going through my head now it depends on on the cleon because uh, like people, and that's the beautiful, the beautiful thing about the, the writing of Star Trek, which is show is like people, people will warp things according to what they want it to, to be. You know, yeah. um, uh, we, 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 we've seen how Gal, Galron and Duras warp that word to suit their needs, right? Right. Um, right. You know, all the time. So um, I, my personal belief of, of what Cleon Honor should be is that uh, they do the right thing and what is right by them, again, personally and by their society, whether someone is watching or not, whether they are around other Cleons or, or whether they are on a battlefield and they've um, um, defeated a, a warrior and he has, again, surrendered or, or Maybe they defeated, um, uh, maybe, they, maybe uh, they were someone that they defeated and that person has a child. Do you then slay that child? Right. What would honor, honor would demand that you would then take that innocent to safety, right? Because that would be the honorable thing to do. You wouldn't leave that innocent on the battlefield. Right. Right? So yeah. these are examples of what I think would be Cleon honor. Um, and... And in, in many ways, Cleon honor, at least I, the way I see it, Cleon honor is not that different from how, how humans should be honorable to each other. I think uh, with Cleons, um, sometimes it, it is more uh, forceful and violent because they are more forceful and violent people. So they find themselves in forceful and violent situations exhibiting cases of, of honor. There's definitely overlap. Right. Um, I mean, when I, when I, I think if someone said, what's the uh, example of how Klingon view honor, I would say it was the, um, oh, no, I don't remember. It's when the uh, Enterprise C uh, saved that Klingon outpost or right. save, try to save that uh, right. during that episode. Um, Yesterday's uh, Enterprise. That great, yes, yeah. Enterprise, uh, yes. Yeah. You know, which helped brought uh, a peace treaty between uh, Klingon and and uh, start and the um, Federation because they saw that as a very honorable thing to do. A, 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 a ship coming in to save an outpost, knowing that they were going to lose because there was no way they could defeat all those um, all those uh, all those ships. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
and it was it was that's a perfect example. And to um to add to that, it was the it was Starfleet who at the time uh, was their enemy, and um they were coming to the aid of of their enemy. You know, in distress, it didn't matter. It said a lot about an enemy that would do that when when your back is against the wall and and you're in such distress you're asking for help you're not asking for help from your comrades you're just asking for help from you know yeah. whoever yeah and, and here is starfleet and, i mean we all know starfleet would do that but that's another way to look at and understand how cleons think cleons never thought the federation of starfleet would do that that's not how Cleons Cle Cle don't look at starfleet like that they're like they would never do that so it surprised them that starfleet would do that and in that, in, in being so surprised, they realized, wow, these people have a sense of honor. At least in that, they have a sense of honor. So yeah. maybe we should give them another look and have at least a, a modicum of respect for them and, and that they did that. And I think that's what opened the door uh, for, for, you know, for the peace talks, right? So yeah. well, it was just one part of what opened the door yeah. for peace talks. But yeah, that's that's something honorable. That's a great example, you know. You know, another one is 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 Kirk. I remember the, the Star Trek Six, and you know, Kirk, basically, he's like, look, these guys killed my son, um, and and it was one guy that killed my son and his and his ship. But you know what? Let them all die. Let them all die. I I don't yeah. care. And, and, you know, you really can't get much more racist than that. And, you oh, know, yeah. from a place of anger, you know. Um, and, at, and at the end of that film, you know, he's like, you know, you've got to let go of some things because there, there is no light at the end of that tunnel. Yeah. You know, there, there, yeah. there is none. And, yeah. and you see Kurt, who we all love, you see his arc at the end of that, at the end of that, and you see, and... And, and even the Cleons look at him like, oh, wow, this guy is now saying at the end of this, he's giving this speech, like, I was wrong, you know? And, and yeah, yeah the, 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 there's room for us all in this, in this galaxy, you know? So I think that's, uh, that's another sense and that started to show the Cleons, there's something to these humans, you know? Um, they, you know, uh, Praxis exploded, um, and you know they could have gone to war with us, but they're opening up peace talks. So it's these little things to show the Cleons that the Federation and Starfleet had a sense of honor. Doesn't mean, as we've seen, doesn't mean <laughs> that the, that the Cleons are going to um, be pals overnight. It's a long process for Cleons because it's just who they are. Sure. And I don't know if if it will ever if that will ever change, you know, it, it, at least not in the immediate Star Trek history that we're currently, currently at. Maybe a couple hundred years, it'll, it'll be different. But I, I think that's just who Cleons are. They, you have to show them a lot for them to actually call you uh, a, an ally, you know, I, yeah. and that's just the mentality of the Cleon. What's next? What are you working on now? Uh, well, we definitely have some things coming up uh, for, uh, for Star Trek Adventures that I can't talk about, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, unfortunately. Um, but I, I will say that um, everyone at Modifius, um, in regards to Star Trek Adventures, is working hard and having some uh, very interesting, thought-provoking conversations on where to go uh, with Star Trek Adventures and places to take it that is not just fun for the people having those conversations, but we're looking at and thinking about how players will look at it and what will entertain them and 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 in gameplay how it'll work and all those kind of uh questions and some of that a lot of that i'm i'm not involved with i'm just in you know come up with a story Derek. okay here's a story you know Excellent. so I'm, I'm i'm working on that um and and um yeah that's about all i can say i was gonna say something else but there, there's some cool things coming up for, for uh, Star Trek Adventures. I think everybody will enjoy it. Well, looking forward to it. I know you've written a lot of the location sections and setting sections in the Klingon Empire core book. Uh, yeah. What were some of your favorite things to write about? What do you think that will, will especially um, make readers happy? That's a great question. Uh, I think, uh, oh, I had a few, a few things which was really fun was, um, I guess one of my favorite or the favorite was creating the, it's in the locations 
section, but I created the uh, secret organization for the Cleons, the Unseen. Yes. And, okay. Right? And I, I thought that was really cool because that had never, we've never seen them have an organization on, uh, in canon, um, and this is not canon, but we've never seen in film and on, and on television, the Cleons never have one. So now I was thinking, well, why not? And <laughs> especially for a role-playing game, you want to uh, give players as many opportunities as you can. And you don't want to give them a lot of information. You just want to set something up, talk about something, and say, now go. You know, <laughs> hey, uh, we've given you uh, some whispers about something and go. So that was a lot of fun um, to do. Uh, the planetary classification system I thought was fun because, I mean, for years we've always heard of class M planets and class this and, you know, demon planets. And everything is classified from Starfleet's perspective. Right. And I remember that first day I started writing after, after uh, talking to Jim, I was like, wait a minute, I can't, I can't do that. I can't <laughs> do that at all. You know, there's no way, there's no way these guys are going to do that. There's no way right. these guys are going to adopt the you know, Starfleet or Federation system. Uh, and, and I was talking to Jim, I was like, Jim, we can't, we can't do that. He's like, all right, then uh, just come up with something and let me know. Said, oh, great. Great. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there you go. Get the word. Right, right. Just come up with a classification <laughs> planetary system. But then I, I thought about it. I said, you know, let's stay in the head of a Cleon. And for Cleons, they cut to the quick. You know, these are guys that do not suffer fools. And so for them, you know, is the planet conquerable, habitable, usable? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and and that's that's the etymology of, you know, that's, that's the origins of where that came from, how I, how I arrived at that. And so that was a lot of fun creating that because once I did that, then that started to open up the entire chapter for me. And then I, and then, and once I had that mindset and I was locked into the Cleon mindset, I started to write everything from that perspective. And uh, I, I remember um, uh, writing about the Praxis explosion, the explosion of the Praxis, and it was totally from a different perspective other than what we've seen in Star Trek VI, yeah. you know, um, they, they don't agree that any of that, or hardly any of that happened. Very few people died. <laughs> you know? um, yeah. They, yeah. they don't know what we're talking about. They don't know what the Federation is talking about. You know, it wasn't that bad. Um, <laughs> yes, I remember but, those sidebars very clearly. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and, and so, you know, I, I was like, yeah, uh, this, like these things that I have to, I have to write, I really want to, and this comes back to your original question is how to think about how to play a Cleon. And I think reading the sidebars that I wrote in that chapter, it kind of shows you the mindset. You know, it's like we're Cleons. We're not gonna, we don't necessarily, necessarily we don't really like the Federation. <laughs> and this is, this, this is our history. This is how we look at history. Um, there's another part I wrote where um, the peace talks were put on the outer rim of the Cleon Empire, and that world was chosen, not because it was some special world, but because the, the new empress, she never wanted to go there again. That's, that's what I was saying. And she wanted some place that she would never have to go to again. And mm -hmm. just that mindset shows you how these people are thinking, you know, that they have to actually, they now have to do this and do these things. So I think my absolute most favorite part was being locked in uh, to the Cleon mindset, writing from their perspective, and hopefully in some ways showing players, hey, this is how Cleons think. Uh, good or bad or indifferent, this is how they think. They're not, they're not and Cleons are not a bad, they're not necessarily the, the uh, or should be always the antagonist of a story. You know, they, they can definitely be the protagonists of stories, but this is who they are, good, bad, and indifferent. They don't hide it, they don't, they don't cover it, they're a proud species. They don't like other people. And if they don't like you, they're going to tell you to your face. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and in that, that is honor, right? Because yeah. okay. I, I think a Cleon will look at a person in Starfleet and the Federation and say, you know, why are you not saying you don't like this person? Or why are you, why is the Federation being so diplomatic? You don't like them, say it. If you want to go to war, <laughs> then go to war. And, and, and those are the <laughs> things that make a Cleon and the uh, Cleon and the Empire of the Empire. So, 
I, yep. I enjoyed that the most, I think. Okay. Well, that shows. You guys, <laughs> it really looks like you guys had a, a lot of fun. All okay. the books, but particularly the Klingon book, is definitely a labor of love. It, it, it definitely was. On every did. page. It did. Yeah. And, and, I, and I'm just going to yeah. say one thing is that is, it was interesting because we all wrote those chapters individually, but when it all came together, it blew me away reading how all of us have put all these things and we all were locked in individually. And just when you put it all together, it just it just blossomed. So it was really it was, it was really good work from everyone. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, they're excellent books. Uh, they I mean, I, I was man. I always talk about how like you don't have to play the game. Just it's like if you just want like a a, a resource book of the right. quadrant or some history of Star Trek, you just read that, and you know it's just, <laughs> it's 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 so well put together. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And and um, a lot of the people that are, have worked on these books or people that are still, excuse me, um, are connected in some way. Uh, Doug Drexler, Keith DeCandrio, myself, um, Jim Johnson. You know, so we're connected in not just necessarily in this book, and I'm sure there are names I'm not even mentioning, that mm -hmm. are connected to Star Trek in other ways. So Star Trek is in every book. You know, and, and I think um, players can, be, can rest assured that Star Trek is in every book. Many of the um, of the of the writers that are writing the novels are are working on and have written Dayton Ward, Scott Pearson um, are writing adventures. So you're getting Star Trek. Rest assured, you're getting Star Trek. Even though it's RPG, it's still from the people that think and live and breathe Star Trek every day. Yeah. All right, excellent. Well, um, th thank you viewers for watching and, and thank you, um, your middle name, <laughs> sorry. Right, Tyler, um, Tyler, yeah. Tyler, Tyler, yes, yes. Yeah, this is actually the, the, the Cleon agent on Discovery, so there you go. Oh, there you are. Oh, oh yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you again. You're, uh, we're very happy with, with the books coming out and we can't, see, can't wait to see what's coming out next. And uh, viewers, I hope you enjoyed the discussion. Um, I mean, as we said in the beginning of this, there's, there's, you know, we don't want to tell you how to play. We just want to, you know, if you want to play uh, the Klingons as murder hobos, do, do as you wish, it's your books, it's your dice, it would have fun. You know, we're just, we're just here to, if in case you're, you're curious about how to play a Klingon in the, I guess you could say the Gene Roddenberry vision or perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's, all, that's all we're sharing with you today. So uh, have a great day and uh, be safe out there. And thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much.